so many layers of crunchy. A recipe for the ultimate crispy cracker thin pizza seems to be more elusive than finding reputable instructions on the other archetype pizzas, where the pizza is crispy and cracker-like in every single bite. Like this. This was indeed a triumph of technique over ingredients, and I believe most of you will be pleasantly surprised when you see how I achieved crispy perfection here. I will also attempt to lure those of you to the dark side who aren't sure about pineapple on their pizza by using a very simple technique. Roll on with the food. I use a pre-ferment for every dough that I make, whether it's pizza dough or bread dough. Pre-ferments add flavor and complexity to a dough, amongst other things. And a poolish is one of the simplest pre-ferments you can make, but it does require a little planning. You just add a small amount of yeast to some cold water and stir until it is fully dissolved. Then add the same amount of flour and mix until homogeneous or homogenous as they call it in America. Once everything's mixed up, it'll sit loosely covered at room temperature for 18 hours. As pointed out by a intrepid viewer in my last video, room temperature varies from house to house. Officially, so to speak, room temperature is between 68 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. If the room you are using is cooler than that, you'll have to leave the poolish out longer. And if it is warmer than that, you'll have to leave it out for less. But what you're looking for is a double in volume and you can easily gauge the double in volume by uh, using rubber bands. Just put the rubber band on the level of where it is when you first mix it up together. This poolish is going to kickstart the fermentation process. Bacteria and enzymes are going to get to work and are going to add a flavorful complexity to the final dough. After it is doubled in size or roughly after 18 hours, stick it in the fridge for a minimum of 30 minutes before you make the dough. You can of course skip the pre-ferment, but you'll miss out on the extra flavor and nuance that it provides. And if I were to skip this stage on any of my doughs, this would be the one where you could get away with it the most due to the extra fat and unique technique employed. For this dough, you need double O flour or zero zero flour. It's especially formulated for wood fire pizza ovens to brown slower than other flours. And these pizzas will be in the oven longer than hand tossed pizzas. Also different to my other dough is the inclusion of cornmeal. Cornmeal interacts with the water differently and provides no gluten for the dough. This will help achieve a more cracker-like consistency. Then we have some lard, or lard as they call it in America. Using shortening will increase the richness of the dough. You can just use oil if you want. Then finally, we have garlic powder. This is not just for taste, but also affects the texture of the dough on an enzymatic level. Because we are going to be rolling out the dough with one of these, the enzymes in the garlic powder will help to reduce what's called snapback or dough memory. It basically makes the dough more extensible. First mix the active yeast into the warm water. Whisk vigorously until it starts to bubble. The bubbling is a sign that the yeast is still active and alive. Then set that to the side and add the cornmeal and the garlic powder to the flour and mix that together with a whisk till fully incorporated. Then we're going to add the ice cold water to this dry mix and mix that together to form a really dry initial dough. Try to get it as mixed together as much as you possibly can. This is going to allow as much of the flour to hydrate as it can before other ingredients factor into it. It's gonna be really dry, almost crumbly. Then next, put the sugar in that yeast mixture that's been sitting on the side and whisk that in so it fully dissolves. Time to add the chilled poolish to the dough. This should have been in your refrigerator for half an hour before using. And then in goes the yeast mixture, the yeast and sugar mixture. Everything's going to mix together. It's going to look really soupy and wet in the beginning, but it'll start to slowly form a dough, after which we'll add the rim temp lard and the salt for some further mixing. Another three, two or three minutes till everything's fully incorporated. After everything is fully incorporated, lightly dust your workbench, countertop, whatever you're using, and turn the dough out onto it for kneading. Think of kneading as folding the dough over and over again. So you're just pushing it into itself, folding it over and repeating and repeating for about 
seven or eight minutes, you're going to feel the dough start to become a lot softer, springier and elastic. Now would be a good time to uh, perform the window pane test uh, where you pull off a piece of the dough and stretch it over a light source. You obviously don't need a little RGB light. You can just do it on your kitchen light and keep pulling it. And if you can see light through it, like a window pane, then uh, the dough has enough elasticity and extensibility at the same time. Rest it at room temperature covered for 20 minutes. If you've got some cool dough ball containers, lightly oil them and it's time to make some dough balls. If you haven't got these little containers, you can always just use a tray, lightly flour it and cover it with plastic or a plastic bag. Just make sure whatever plastic you use is food safe. The dough you've just made should yield five dough balls of roughly 380, 390 grams a piece. I just use some digital scales and keep chopping little bits off and adding them till I get them all roughly the same size, then roll them into the balls. What you're doing when you're rolling dough balls up is basically making a taut surface area by both pushing the dough into itself and rolling it against the palm of your hand. Doing this is a form of degassing the dough, but it's also going to ensure that they are, we're eventually going to have round pieces. Whatever you're using, whether a tray or containers, put them in the fridge and they will ferment in there and get lovely and tasty overnight. 24 hours minimum is what I recommend. Then after that 24 hours of resting in the fridge, you need to get as many dough balls out as you're going to use that night. Rest them covered at room temperature for about an hour to two hours. In that time, you can have the oven preheating and start making your toppings and sauce. I set my oven to the maximum it'll go, which is 550 degrees with the pizza steel on the top rack. I think that one of the reasons that those who do hate pineapple on their pizza because of a lack of balance. Nearly always it is thrown onto a pizza cold and wet, either from a can or fresh, it doesn't matter, and is always paired with ham or some form of ham. This is a fail even for me, and I am an avid pineapple on pizza advocate. The wet bland ham offers very little in terms of contrasting the pineapple and cold wet pineapple clashes with everything pizza is about in all honesty. I will show you now how it should be done. So this is the simple technique that I was talking about in the intro. It's called cooking it, transforming it. Add a little bit of neutral oil to a medium to high hot pan. Chuck in the fresh pineapple pieces. I never use canned pineapple, but you can do you baby boo. A little bit of salt will help draw out the natural sugars in the pineapple and help to get some lovely caramelization on them. Chuck in some unsalted butter and get that melty melty. Then we're going to add some dried red chili flakes. Remember that spice balances sweet, but it's probably more fair to say that sweet balances spice. We are then going to add some sugar and sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar is going to round it all off with some bright, tasty acidity. Then transfer the whole contents into a container of choice. All in all, you're looking just for long enough time to soften the pineapple, draw out those caramelization colors and reduce the resulting buttery vinegar juice loveliness. It is pepperoni that is pineapple's true soulmate. Unlike sweaty cold ham, pepperoni is spicy and savory and pairs beautifully with pineapple. I really like this brand of pepperoni. It's from Chicago. It lasts for ages in your fridge. You can slice it, dice it, cube it, or any combination. For this particular application, I'm just looking for some nice little slices. I also recommend grating your own low moisture mozzarella and try to look for a grater with big holes in it like this box grater. The bigger the little strands of cheese are before you put it in into the oven, the less it will melt, the less oily and sort of wet your pizza will become. Here I'm making just a simple pizza sauce with San Marzano tomatoes, some tomato puree, salt, sugar, and uh, oil, and a little bit of dried oregano. Just lightly pulse it with an immersion blender and set it aside until you're ready to roll out with the dough. Time to roll on with the dough. The first few attempts of making this pizza, I just simply rolled it out. And whenever I got little pockets of air in it, like little crispy layers, I always like marveled at it. And I really wanted to sort of create as many of those sensations as I could. So I ended up treating it a little bit more like a pastry than a bread dough. Before you roll any dough out, it's better to sort of 
easily just ease it out at first you know sort of stretch it out like you would a pizza to get it all started and then start rolling it i'll think of a better execution in the future but for now i just i'm trying to keep it as square as i can and you'll see why in just a moment and i'm doing that by every time i turn it i roll a little bit more out on the corners than i do across the whole pie looking for like super thin like a millimeter and a half two millimeters and get it as thin as you can it's going to be way bigger than your uh, pizza peel or pizza steel even now for those purists out there look away i am spraying some spray oil onto it i tried brushing it with uh, oil but it was just so cumbersome fold it over once give it another spray with whatever you use or just brush it with oil the fat's going to help keep a kind of a separation between the layers press it all down at the edges and start rolling again roll on again with the dough same procedure same technique get it nice and thin and then after you've got it roughly the size of your peel maybe a bit bigger start dotting the edge with your rolling pin this is going to sort of like crimp it and help it keep it shaped and then this little thing i've got here is a meat tenderizer a jacarda but you can use a fork or a regular dough docker i, I bought that because it's made by jim beam <laughs> and it looked cool and i bought it does the trick the pizza will get par baked on that steel that's been in that oven for an hour preheating to max in my oven it took about maybe three or four minutes to get a nice little golden color and then flip it over to sauce it and I used a little brush to brush the sauce all the way to the edges. And now you just treat it like it's a normal pizza. You add your toppings, your cheese, your pepperoni, and well, whatever you choose to use, actually. And then in this case, it is pineapple, the juicy, beautiful cooked pineapple. And then that lovely little butter and uh, sherry vinegar uh, reduction. Uh, just drizzled over the top of it and back in the oven for another four-ish five-ish minute keep an eye on it just make sure the cheese is melted and there you go the rest is crispy history or crispy crispatory i've since learned a few little tricks that i'm going to improve in a future iteration one is keeping the lard solid the other is I'm going to have a go at keeping the thing, the dough ball square from the very beginning. I will actually, speaking about the lard, increase the lard amount as well. Perhaps use vegetable shortening because it's not quite as, you know, lardy. Oh, and I'm going to also have a go at resting the dough in between uh, folds, or at least before it bakes. Okay, this is the ultimate test. This is the piece from the very middle. Crispy as the perimeter. Mm. Layers upon layers of crispy goodness. I must say this pepperoni is the only pepperoni you should buy. And the sherry vinegar on the pineapple was a stroke of genius. Look how crispy. Wafer crispy. Quick look at the bottom there for you. Thanks for watching this. See you next time. Oh no. I cut the fucking end of my cutting board off.